All right, so without much fanfare, we're gonna go ahead and pull our diff cover here and take a look at our fluid condition and the overall condition of our differential. Pretty sure I remember you gotta get this out of the way. It looks like we could probably do it without the uh, sway bar being moved, but it's pretty simple. We're gonna take it off its main mounts and it'll pivot and swing out of the way. Uh, those should be 15s, these look like 13s, and then of course we need something to chisel into the RTV here. Um, and one of the big things we're gonna wanna check is how rusty our cover is. And if our cover's too rusty, we're gonna wanna order a new one. We've actually seen where these get little pinholes in them and leak. Um, this one's dry, so I think we're okay, but the big key is just make sure these things aren't either A, rusted through, have pinholes, or getting weak to the point that it's not gonna serve its purpose and you should replace it while you have it off. That way you're not doing it later and wasting the fluid. We'll spray some hope and pray juice on it. All right, now these should be 15 millimeter. And uh, well, we're gonna go ahead and use our little impact on them. And uh, well, this one's made a little extra powerful because we have the right battery on it. Oh yeah, smoking. Oh, that side's much better. All right. See, now that you got your sway bar out of the way, you got a lot more access here. Now, the top bolts we won't be able to get our impact on, it looks like. Um, we can try our ratchets where you had a quarter, uh, right angle impact would be really nice. Oh, I could use my air impact. But anyway, um, now would be a good time also to upgrade your sway bar. That's a pretty common WJ upgrade. Put a thicker roll bar on. All right, so we're gonna try out our uh, ZPM again, but I'm gonna tone her down a little bit. I'm gonna go half power. I don't wanna snap these bolts. All right, I just wanna knock them loose. Well, half power is more than enough when you've got the near infinite power of vacuum in space time or something like that. Look, in case you're ever wondering, the fluid, they put it on there, 75W140. Synthetic. And yeah, that's as far as we'll get with this one. The Astro Air Ratchet was great, but still too big to reach the upper bolts. Guess it means back to a ratchet. All right, so our top ones, we're gonna need to use the old fashioned way. Well, we'll go kinda old fashioned. Oh, <laughs> come on now. These aren't bad, once you break them loose, you're pretty good. All right, so I got two still connected up here, pretty much finger tight. And uh, what we're gonna do is come chisel our cover off and uh, drain our fluid. Wow, that fluid looks pretty good. I'm just assuming there's a lot, enough in it. Man, how much you want to bet this was done recently? I wonder if they put the friction modifier in and that's why it was a little noisy. It doesn't even stink horribly. This is like almost brand new fluid. Okay, so we'll take our top ones off. All right, so here's a little magnet inside the cover. And there's some smooth goo on it, but no chunks, no pieces of gear. Looks pretty decent so far. So the cover looks good. The cover's clean inside. 
and uh, it looks like, yeah, looks pretty good inside, honestly. I would imagine this was serviced at some point. Using brake cleaner, we'll clean and inspect the carrier, gears, and diff. So I'd imagine this was serviced at some point, which is cool. Um, it's nice to see a car that's had maintenance done. So for ease of everything, I just slid the transfer case in the neutral. That should let us spin around here. Spinning the differential allows you to fully inspect it for wear, gear chips, and overall condition. How it looks when it spins is dependent on your differential type, and we'll talk about that next. So, my limited understanding of how quad drive works is the G rotor pump that's inside pumps oil and then activates its clutch, basically. So, if it detects a slip differential between the two sides, that'll cause the pump to work. What I'm finding interesting is that now I did spin this with the truck in park and the differential was acting like an open diff, which is normal, it should, for the first few turns. Um, but now that there's probably cause there's no drag it's, it's grabbing. So it would probably be interesting with someone's help. If I were to hold one of those wheels and spin the other, how much torque would I be able to, to it push on it before it doesn't do anything. And, uh, you know, there's no oil in the thing, obviously. So I don't know if the G rotor pump is still primed. It may be probably is. I doubt that it loses its prime just when you pop the diff cover. But uh, that would be interesting to see as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just clean out this differential into inside, let it dry, and then I'm going to prep the, uh, the uh, RTV and everything because that's going to need time to dry. But first, let's drain and clean the front axle. All right, so now we've moved to the front. Let's go ahead and do this one. You know, one thing that would probably be good before you take all these bolts off is uh, make sure you can get this off. And I think we've still got enough bolts on to make it no big deal. But uh, a smart person always said, make sure you can get the plug out. Yep, we can get the plug out. bunch of fluid that looks pretty decent. Again, knowing that I, again, since I know where this Jeep came from, I know that whole family is really good about doing maintenance on their cars. And my friend in general always keeps up on the maintenance. And uh, sure, this thing may have sat for a while, might have had some issues, but testament of, uh, Maintenance. Look at how <laughs> good this fluid looks. So I just knocked my thing down here. Let me tighten that better. It happened uh, twice today. Come on, it's from Harbor Freight. It shouldn't do that. No glitter came out. That's good. And a little Dana 30 with the quadra drive axle. Looks pretty decent so far. Again, very similar here. We've got our magnet, nothing on it at all. Which again, it, it means this thing was recently serviced. There's hardly anything on this at all, um, but there's no metal flakes or anything. So oh, I'm sorry, I'm looking at it and not the camera. But uh, as you can see here, there's your little magnet in the bottom. Scrape carefully to not damage the case or mating surfaces and don't let foreign material into the diff. All right, so we'll do a general inspection of that. So one thing I was kind of looking at here was, you see that kind of scraping and that sort of divot there. I want to take a closer look at that. It doesn't look like it rubbed on anything. It looks like it's just from where, when it was cast and, and put in. So 
a lot of the casting marks and flat, like you can see casting flash on that thing. It's really not the greatest. Um, man, I didn't expect this axle to be this locked. Now, when my, my friend was here, I did have him hold the other side and with minimal torque, we were able to overcome it. So I think it's just wheel torque from the sitting. What I'd probably do to prove it is, you know, have the thing on the ground enough, put one wheel off the ground and see. But there are some steps in the service manual specifically for quadra drive axles and for testing them. And, but I don't think just because I can turn and you can't see it, but both wheels are turning forward, it's not necessarily a bad thing, I, th I don't think. I don't think it means that our quadra drive is locked up or anything like that. Let's clean this case out, clean our surface off. I'm gonna sacrifice this rag in the name of cleanliness. Again, a lot of times you watch YouTube videos and it's like, how fast can I do something? And you'll even see in like forum threads, hey, I did this job and it should take two hours and I did it in 15 minutes. And that's cool. And when you're working professionally for this stuff, that's extremely important for mechanics to be able to work quickly and efficiently. But if you're doing this as a hobby or on your own and you have time and this is your vehicle that you're working on, you can take the time to learn. You can take the time to scrub and clean things up and make it perfect. That time is what you're afforded because of what you like to do. So my point with it is take advantage of that time. That's all. That's you. Go for it. Take the extra time, make sure the, the gasket surface is perfect. Make sure everything looks clean inside, scrub it out. If you're doing it for someone, a customer, you're working and you got other cars in the line, hey, you gotta be efficient you gotta, and you gotta do it right, obviously, but you gotta be efficient and do it quickly. But if you're doing it yourself and you're doing it for fun, take, take back and enjoy it. Enjoy yourself, enjoy what you're doing. Take the time, don't worry about it. Do it right, but take the time. We don't need to make this a 40 minute video, just cleaning out this thing. What I wanted to really show you. So this is a die grinder, 90 degree die grinder type tool with a roll lock attachment. And this is a roll lock 3M disc. It's a bristle disc is what they call it. The cool thing about these bristle discs is they will take off gasket, RTV glue, and they won't dig into the metal. If you try really hard, they can, but what? But they don't. So I really like the bristle disc. We're getting in here and cleaning up the surface. Now, just using this on steel, which this is, it's pretty impossible to cut into the metal any appreciable amount. Doing on softer metals, maybe aluminum. Yeah, if you're really aggressive with it, you can. So you gotta be a little careful, but you can watch very carefully, let the tool do the work. You'll remove gasket material, RTV, et cetera, and get yourself to a nice clean surface. Don't stay in one spot. You can, again, softer metals, you could put a low spot in it. So you wanna move it around. We'll go around, we'll clean the entire thing. We'll clean it again with brake cleaner. This will be ready then for our RTV to be put on and we can get it in. Now, a nice thing about the bristle disc, we can flip this over. Again, not as aggressive as a sanding disc, but these things will take off your rust scale. What we're gonna do is coat most of the underneath of the vehicle with some rust preventative uh, coating. And uh, to do that, I wanna get some of the big rust off of here. We'll put them back on the Jeep and then we'll go ahead and just rust coat the entire thing. With the diff cover fully cleaned and dry, we can apply a gear oil spec RTV. Links in the video description. Now the goal here is to not apply too much. I was never good with a little dabble do you, but I've tried over time to not put giant beads of RTV on things. And this was still probably a tad more than needed. The RTV will state the bead size required and a quarter inch is usually more than enough. And no gaskets are used on these from the factory, just RTV is needed. All right, like usual, I put way too much on.
Now follow your specific RTV's instructions. This RTV states to install the part immediately, but only finger tighten the fasteners until the RTV begins to show. Then it sits for an hour, followed by a final torque to spec. All right, so according to the directions, I assembled it immediately. I've now put these in finger tight till my, until the goose starts squeezing out. We'll let this sit for an hour and then we'll torque them to final spec. The torque on the bolts is 30 pound feet. So we try to jump around a little bit and then once we get them, we'll go around and make sure all of them are tight. Good to go. These have the same torque, 30 pound feet. The rear diff cover installs the same as the front with the same RTV and the same steps. So we skip to the final torquing. And we've not forgotten the rubber plug. We're gonna let these cure for 24 hours. And when we fill this, we'll put the rubber plug back in. While I'm back here though, I am gonna go ahead and re replace our bolts for our sway bar. Nice. All right, so it's been well over 24 hours. Our RTV is fully cured and we're ready to go ahead and fill up our axles. Now we're gonna to need to use some of this Mopar uh, friction modifier with our fluid. And uh, in the rear, we need to do a four ounce fill of that. And in the front, two and a half ounce. So what I'm gonna show you is a little trick for putting in your friction modifier, but we're gonna start by filling our axle a little bit. Um, but let me just show you on this table down here that you can't see yet, some of the tools that we're gonna use and some of the tricks involved. So obviously we need to fill our differential. So we're gonna use one of these cheap little paint cups. I have like hundreds of these things that I bought in bulk and they're really handy for fluid management and stuff like that. And I say that because I have this fluid filler pump that you've seen us use before. And this one I've used for gear, gear fluid, but I don't have the longer hose anymore that fits into the gallon container because that's what I'm using. I'm using a, uh, I'm using a, a big gallon container of fluid. So what I'm going to do is basically just go ahead and fill this up with my straight up fluid. So you're probably wondering, well, if you're using this transfer pump, can't you use that to fill this as well? Well, I want to measure out pretty accurately um, the, what they call for, especially in the Dana 30, where it seems to call for two and a half ounces. Now, of course, I could just dump this in the here, fill this up, refill this and top it off, and that would work perfectly fine. In fact, that's what I was going to do. But I realized I also had these little things. Um, these are something I get at Harbor Freight periodically. There's these little fluid bottles. They have little graduated uh, measurements on them. They're pretty handy for various things. And I also have a clear piece of hose, which I can just put on the end here. And now if I take my friction modifier and fill this up, I'll basically have a bottle that I can measure and put in all my friction modifier that I need. All right, so now that I've got my friction modifier in here, I just put this cap back on. Don't cross thread the cap. And then I just put this in and squeeze it in. So I've got my little squeeze bottle of friction modifier and I've got my tub of the correct fluid. So I'm ready to go ahead and fill. Now we can take our little bottle of friction modifier, put it right in here. You can even hold this up pretty far and you can just squeeze it on home. Now it's just a matter of filling it up the rest of the way.
Here we go. Oops, I was blocking the camera. We got our plug in. And this one's done. Now the front's exactly the same, but it only uses two and a half ounces of the friction modifier. Otherwise, it's the same fluid, same fill procedure. The only difference is the fill plug, which is threaded, and we're going to torque that to spec. The basic fill procedure here is the same. Add some fluid, then the two and a half ounces of friction modifier that the front requires. Then continue filling until it reaches the bottom of the fill plug opening. Once full, reinstall the plug. Though not needed, I did use a tiny bit of PTFE sealant on the threads before torquing the plug to 25 pound feet. Now let's wrap up with the transfer case. It's a good practice. I always forget to do this, but always get your fill plug first. If you can't get it off for some reason, you haven't drained all your fluid out. You know, that is transmission fluid. So I'm pretty sure the shop that did this put ATF in this mistakenly, which is fine for the 242, but it is not fine for the progressive clutch in the NV247. So we're gonna drain this out and refill it. And I have some spare, so I might actually fill some up and drain a little bit to kind of wash out some of this stuff. So I went up on my shelf, I've got this old bottle. It's about half full of NV247 fluid. And uh, I had it capped, I just put on my little fluid transfer pump. We're gonna put our drain plug back on after it drains for a bit. And then I'm gonna fill it up a little bit with this, drain it, I'm gonna do that twice. So I'm gonna basically use whatever I have in here and do uh, kind of like a flush. Now, like I said, that means this fluid's been pumped into the G-Rotor pump for the progressive clutch. So I'm not gonna be able to necessarily get that out. I mean, I guess I could spin the tires, but I'd have to put enough in there to do it. So I think what I'm best to do, and I know it kind of sucks because this fluid isn't exactly cheap. It's gonna probably cost about 30 bucks to do this because I'll have to buy two new things of fluid is go ahead and fill it up, drive it for a couple hundred miles, and then do another fluid change on it. All right, so, and that'll confirm the color of our fluid. I'm pretty sure the Mopar stuff is clear. Like I said, I looked up the fluid spec of it one time, and I'm pretty sure it's some type of an ExxonMobil rated uh, hydraulic fluid. But it's still better. I, I'm just gonna buy the stuff that they say to put in it, and I'm not gonna worry about it. But I suppose in theory, you could buy a big jug if you knew for sure and you wanted to take the risk. You could buy a big jug of stuff and throw it in there, but I don't really wanna take that risk on this. And you see how clear that fluid is in comparison? So they put ATF in this, which it's not supposed to have. So we filled a few ounces of fluid and then drained. Then a second round with a few ounces of fluid and another drain. The fluid got clearer each time. We gave it a little time to settle and drain each time we did it. All right, this is gonna settle more than anything, so let's pull it out. And we'll see if it's clearer than uh, in the last go round. And then we'll fill it and we'll, uh, like I said, hope for the best. That's ah, more clear. I mean, there's still ATF in it. And uh, I'm sure we're gonna see that as we go along here. It's definitely more clear. So we'll give that a good drain and then we'll go ahead and fill this up. We'll put our drain, our drain plug back on. I've got a tiny bit of PTFE sealant. Don't overdo it because you've got the sump that picks things up. If you end up getting that inside the trans transfer case, you could end up having a pretty big issue. So when in doubt, don't use any. They didn't even use it from the factory. I just do it because I'm OCD and crazy. You torque this thing fine, then it's gonna be no issue. And 
There's a torque range on this, so we're just going to do 22, which is not quite at the end of the torque range, but not quite in the middle either. There we go. So there might actually be enough room here. Oh yeah, I'm just going to fill it like that. I ain't going to make my life difficult. When there's room, this ain't a bad way to go. Oh, <laughs> when there's a sealed for your freshness. All right, let's uh, shotgun this on in there. Oh yeah. All right, this one will uh, pump it in because I think we're close. Oh, there we go. All right. Now I'm going to pump more because I like to. But that way, if there's any ATF that wants to bubble up to the top, it'll come out right into our drain pan. So we'll let that level off. You don't want to overfill these things, which you kind of can't. You got to get them to the bottom here, but let it drain out and level off because uh, otherwise you'll be going through your vent, which is a good time to check your vent as well and make sure it's still attached. Torque. There we go. All right, and now we can be a little more comfortable knowing we have the right fluid in our transfer case. And that wraps up our video for today. Fresh fluids in the front and rear diffs as well as our NV247 transfer case. So like the video and let us know in the comments all about your WJ. And if you want to catch up on our full and upcoming catalog of WJ content as well as many other cars, well, subscribe to Vortex Garage.